All right, I'm gonna work on pulling the engine and the trans out. I added some more hydraulic fluids. So now our cab will go all the way forward. And then to get all up and personal up in here with the forklift, go work on removing this fuel tank as well as this step with the batteries so that the forklift can come right up to the frame. So this is the secondary tank. The engine pulls from that tank. And this tank has this little valve here that we can close so it doesn't connect to that tank anymore. So go put this air fitting in like that. And then plug this regulator in there so we can regulate just a couple PSI into here. And that's going to push the fuel out of this tank into the other one. And then we can close off that valve and it'll be nice and lightweight to remove. Got bubbles coming in now, so I guess that tank's empty. Although now to undo this fitting, we've got to undo the hose there first so that this will unscrew but then fuel's gonna start flowing out. So I'm gonna put a vacuum on this tank now and that'll hold the fuel from flowing out that way while we unscrew that fitting. I'm removing the two batteries from this side so that this whole battery tray plus step and air tank can all be removed. There's four main bolts holding that on. And once that's loose, I undo these air lines. Here I'm just undoing various hoses and whatnot. Coolant lines. Alternator. AC compressor. Wiring. More air lines and wiring. And then I lost the footage of me removing the engine, so here's a video from the future of the new engine going in, but this video is played in reverse, so you guys can get the idea of what it looked like pulling the engine out. Alrighty, the old engine is out of here. Now I'm not too worried about the rest of the process of getting the new engine in here. That should all be within my skill sets. But there is definitely one area of my life where I do not feel fully equipped to handle on my own, and that is protecting my online presence. So that's why I'm super thankful to have Aura on my team. They are a company whose main purpose is to keep my personal and private information out of areas of the internet that I would not approve of. Aura is a sponsor of today's video, and they've been great supporters of the channel, and they're experts in helping me navigate the murky waters of online privacy. And given that it seems like to do anything on the internet these days you have to enter in your email, phone number, payment information, home address, etc. That after doing that enough times your personal stuff gets in the hands of data brokers that'll mistreat your information in nefarious ways. So I encourage you to go to Aura.com Goodrich to learn all the ways that Aura can help you and by doing so you're not only protecting yourself but you're also helping to support this channel. And not only does Aura keep your private information from being maliciously shared across the internet by data brokers, they also have a whole suite of features from antivirus to password management and many things in between so Aura can be a one-stop shop and you don't have to juggle a whole bunch of different apps to keep you protected from all different angles. So just like I want the best tools for each job I'm tackling when I'm working on my trucks or engines, Aura is the best tool for the job when it comes to keeping me safe online. And they handle that department so I can focus all my energy into the projects I love. So please consider signing up at Aura.com Goodrich for a two week free trial. Stay safe online folks while I get back to this engine swap. So here's our fresh lawn block with all new internals ready to rock and roll. So now our focus is to take all the external parts off the old engine and put it onto the sides of this new engine. And once again, a huge thank you to K2 Express for providing this new engine to me. I highly recommend going and following them on Instagram. They are the best guys ever and have been super generous and helpful to me. On another note, I'm not a professional engine builder. I'm just a guy that's cocky enough to get out of his comfort zone and take on any task. So I don't recommend this video to quite be a how to on how to deal with these engines but this can more so be a video of you and I becoming more familiar with how these engines work and all the intricate little parts and pieces to them. So let's start off with the easiest thing, a starter motor. So zap that off. Next I'm doing all these fuel injector lines. I'm not really going in any particular order with these engine parts. It's more so just what catches my attention next. Here goes the power steering pump and its little gasket. This is the AC compressor. I already removed the alternator. Next is a coolant tube that feeds coolant to the intercooler. Now loosen up this whole fan pulley, get the belts nice and loose, and then remove that whole assembly. This is the front dampener, zapping that off. There goes the coolant filter. Next, I'm taking off this front motor mount, as well as this cover plate, and then the water pump. Next, I'm tackling the air compressor, 
it's a pretty tight fit, so I was having trouble getting it out. And I ended up having to undo this fuel line to get it out the last little bit so that it could be fully removed. Now I'm removing this bearing assembly that supports that gear that drives the air compressor and power steering pump. And here's the front cover plate of the gear that drives the injection pump. I undid all the last remaining bolts holding this whole front structure on and gave it a few wiggles and slid it off. Now I'm removing the gear that drives the fuel injection pump, but before that it's very important to keep timing. So there's this little port in the fuel injection pump that I can put this drill bit down into to keep it from spinning. And then I get the forklift involved and some ratchet straps and undo all the bolts holding this injection pump on and wiggle it loose. Even add a third ratchet strap to support it a little more and then it's out of there. And since there's no need to have this injection pump laying on the ground off to the side, I went ahead and installed it directly onto the new engine. And my friend next to me is helping to start the first bolt so they can hold put. Now I put all the hardware in, finger tight, and then start cinching it into place. It bolts to that front structure plate as well as the side of the block. Next I'm removing the clutch. It has eight bolts around the perimeter that seat it to the flywheel. Now my engine does have a brake saver unit, which is used to help slow down. It's kind of an alternative to Jake brakes, but that unit is bolted in between the transmission and the engine. So it kind of has two flywheels. It has this one that the clutch rides against and another one further in that actually has teeth that the starter engages into. Now I'm removing the side plate that feeds oil from the brake saver back to the engine. As well as these bottom main oil pipes. Now during this time frame, I was kind of in a hurry to get this engine together because there was a job coming up that I wanted to use my semi-truck for. So you're going to see me cut some corners like trying to reuse the front and rear main seal as well as the original water pump. But later in the video, you're going to find out that me cutting those corners did not pan out at all. But luckily that job I was hoping to do got canceled. So I did end up having time to go back and do things the right way. But here with a little bit of prying, this whole brake saver bell housing unit comes loose. It's a real heavy unit, so I move this oil filter out of the way so I can come get the forklift involved, and then use the forklift to move it out of the way and off to the side. Next, I undo the rest of the bolts holding this rear structure on, and with a few wiggles and pries, that whole thing comes off. I immediately go to install that on the other engine. However, the engine's sitting slightly too low on this pallet, so I had to jack it up and put a 2x4 underneath it, and then it was up high enough for this bell housing to bolt on. So there's a few bolts on the inside and on the outside to hold this to the engine. Now I manhandle the brake saver into place and get it lined up. The brake saver kind of works like a torque converter, except in a different fashion, but it uses the engine oil to create resistance and help slow the engine down. So you can use it as engine braking to help slow the truck down. But next goes this secondary flywheel, whatever you want to call it. And I zap it on with all the main bolts. Okay, the injection pump's on. It's pinned with that drill bit. The whole rear structure's on flywheels on in there. So now there's this hole right here and I have the engine net. And I've rotated the engine around so where our first cylinder is at top dead center and I should allow for this 3 8 bolt to go in through this hole and thread into the flywheel. And a little threaded hole it has and that will hold it at top dead center. All right, since that bolt went in, that means we caught that hole. The engine's locked at top dead center. The, the injection pump is pinned where it needs to be to match up with cylinder one being at top dead center. So now we're gonna put our timing gear on and cinch it down. And hopefully our timing will be perfect. First, there's a stud that needs to be hammered in right here. And then I put the gear that drives the injection pump on. And then this front plate with these four hardened bolts just clamps down really hard and holds that gear from spinning on that shaft. So you can adjust your timing however it needs to be. But next, I'll work this whole front structure on. And then the front motor mount with eight main bolts holding it on. And then this little cover plate that feeds over to the other side to attach the water pump on. And like I said before, this is the original water pump, but I did eventually go back and replace it with a brand new water pump so we don't have any issues there. Next is that bearing housing that holds the gear that drives the power steering and the air compressor. And then the air compressor slides on and cinches down with three nuts. Which, as you can imagine, the nut on the back side was kind of hard to get to. Now this engine does actually have some glow plugs, so I'm inserting those in right now and then tightening those down. And next I'm putting the injectors in there and then cinching those down. And then there's these little three fuel lines that 
hide underneath the valve cover and they take high pressure fuel from the injection pump and feed them through the injectors. And then all those lines cinch down with an open-ended wrench. Next, I'm putting these various caps on and ports and brackets that seal up the side. And that last bracket helps to support the oil cooler, which is going on next. So here's a big oil cooler. Now this oil cooler is about twice the size you would normally see on a 3406 cat because it needs to have extra cooling capacity to handle the hot oil that comes from the brake saver unit. Now on the other side of the engine, there's this little cover plate and then this little port that it needs to go in with a little line that takes oil from the compressor and drains it back into the engine because oil pressure will feed the compressor to keep it nice and lubed up. Then up here I'm threading in a little port for a coolant line to go to the compressor because the compressor is also liquid cooled. And I forget if coolant flows through that line from the compressor back into the engine or if the engine feeds coolant through that line to the compressor, but it doesn't matter. It's a coolant line. But next I'm putting all these fuel injector lines in. I cinch the tops down and then I leave the bottoms kind of loose because then later on when I'm trying to prime the fuel system, I can have air exit those lower caps and then tighten them up once I get fuel to that point. Next I'm swapping this rear lift plate with the other engine. The original engine had that taller lift point that's also designed to have the remote oil filter bolt to that. And then I move to the side to bolt up these oil lines where one line takes oil pressure from the engine and feeds it through the oil filter. And then the fresh filtered oil flows through the other line to feed the rest of the engine. And I think it has some extra piping that's involved with the design of feeding oil to the brake saver unit. All right, now the engine's hoisted up in the air. And I'm installing the oil pump with all its respective lines. And I think it has some extra piping that's involved with the design of feeding oil to the brake saver unit. But once all those pipes are bolted and fixed in place, I lower it down to the oil pan. Start getting everything lined up there. Then there's a ton of little bolts that go all around the base of that. So I get a few of them started here and then do the rest off camera. Next, I'm hooking up these two oil pipes. One feeds oil to the oil cooler to get cooled down, and then the other feeds it back to the engine so it can enjoy cooled down oil. Now I'm installing this other side plate that I think takes maybe some extra oil from the brake saver that bleeds off and then returns it back to the engine. As well as these bottom main tubes that'll divert oil and feed the brake saver unit when it's in operation. Here I'm placing all these individual gaskets for the intake manifold, which is also a water to air intercooler to cool down the pressurized air from the turbo because your engine will make more power when it's ingesting cooler air because cooler air is more dense. And that's held on with a ton of bolts that feed up through the bottom. So I'm getting into all those tight places and tightening those down. And this is a tube that returns the coolant back to the engine after it flows through the intercooler. This is a little manifold that organizes the fuel return line as well as the fuel feed line. So I hook up the return line to the injection pump as well as the feed line. And then another feed line that goes from the filter and the fuel pump up to the manifold. Next I'm installing a new thermostat into this housing as well as this gasket. And then it bolts to the side of the head right here. And then there's this other pipe that I'm lubing up with grease because it's an o-ring fitting on the bottom there. So once it's all lubed up I slide it down and rotate it into place and, and bolt the top half to the thermostat. Right here I'm installing a little heat shield that separates the heat from the turbo from the oil lines and everything else underneath there. And this little oil line I'm hooking up now feeds a bypass oil filter. So then I put the clutch on and now I'm working the transmission back onto the engine. It's heavy but luckily I have the forklift to help me and after enough jiggling and encouragement it all slides into place and I can put all the bell housing bolts in. And then I felt it was a good time to install the starter. So put that back on. As well as this random cover plate. Now I'm bolting on the fuel filter housing. As well as hooking up the respective fuel lines that are associated with that. And here's a bracket that holds a coolant filter. And I get rid of the old crusty hose and put a fresh heater hose on there. Right here I'm installing the turbo oil drain pipe and then the manifold and turbo is ready to go on. And then I work on connecting that oil drain pipe from the turbo down to the oil pan. And up here I'm tightening on the oil feed line. And we're nearly done with this engine, except... Okay folks, I have bad news. 
almost have this engine fully dressed, even with the transmission on. And I hop back up to the front area to wrap things up up here with the dampener, power steering, whatnot. But then I noticed that at this front main seal, you can tell there's a gap. So I was like, that ain't right. That's obviously going to leak oil. So then I promptly learned that these engines have a thin wear sleeve that slides and takes up that gap. And it's designed to be replaced when you replace those seals as well. Here's the old engine. And as you can see, there is that strip of metal on the outside that takes up that little gap we were seeing earlier. So me trying to cut corners and trying to reuse the front and rear main seal isn't going to pan out at all since this engine did not come with that wear sleeve. And it won't be bad to put a new wear sleeve and front main seal up there. But the sucky part is that now the transmission has to come off, the brake saver unit has to come off, because the seal back here is the same exact design, so it's definitely going to have its gap that is going to give us trouble. So time to undo a bunch of work. Not only are new seals like 220 bucks, but it takes like a $450 special tool to install them. So, so let's get back to it. Nothing else I can do, but do it right this time. All right, let's yank this transmission off. As well as the clutch, and then these oil pipes. That secondary flywheel, pry the whole brake saver off. I'm tired of using the forklift now, so I'm just muscling it around. And as you can see on this rear main as well, there's that gap. Now we're back at the front of the engine, and I used some screwdrivers to gently massage the original seal out of there. And then I make sure the surface is nice and clean. And now I install this first part of the special tool that aligns the seal and the sleeve. Once that's bolted on, I, I put some retaining compound on that wear sleeve. So the seal and sleeve are in place now, and then the second piece goes on the end, and then you tighten this big old nut that pushes the whole sleeve and seal in at one time. So even though that tool was pretty expensive, it did a perfect job of installing that seal. So here we are for the rear main seal now, doing the same process, cinching it down. Which is good, now things are done right. Obviously it makes a lot of sense to replace your front and rear main seals when we're in this deep. So next, let's throw this brake saver back on. Make sure it's lining up. Secondary flywheel again. Put all the main bolts in, torque them all down. Seems like we've done this before. I turn the engine over a little bit just to make sure everything's still spinning freely, which it is. And now I'm putting the whole clutch on, which this clutch does have dual discs. I feel like that's pretty standard for semi trucks. However, I don't actually have a clutch alignment tool that's supposed to line up all the discs and whatnot with the pilot bearing and make sure everything's centered and the splines are lined up. So I'm just barely cinching down this clutch with the uh, outer bolts that go on. And then I'm just looking down the center and moving things around with my fingertips until everything looks to be perfectly centered and line up by eyeball. And I've had good luck with this before when I don't have a clutch alignment tool. So, so I was feeling pretty good that I could get it pretty lined up like this. And once everything is lined up as close as I can, then I go around and cinch the outer bolts tight and that cinches everything tight, and that actually compresses the springs and holds all the clutch plates where they need to be. So then once again, throwing these oil pipes in the bottom, as well as this side plate, as well as a little oil line that plugs into the top there. All right, now I'm back to the front, installing this coolant pipe that feeds cool coolant to the intercooler. And next I put on the front dampener. It's held on with six main bolts up there. And I put on this little cover plate for that gear that drives the injection pump. Once that's all cinched down, I put the power steering on, which I kind of had to rotate the engine slightly to get its splines to line up. Next, I'm threading in these studs. There's two main studs up top. And then throwing on belts, and then the assembly for the fan pulley bolts onto those studs, as well as two other bolts up top. And then I kind of heave it up into place and cinch it down, and I can tighten it later with the tensioner. But next, I'm putting the alternator on. And then I'm not bothering installing the AC compressor right now. The AC didn't work before, and, and I'm not too worried about not having AC in this truck for now. But that's it. The new engine's all fully put together. So now it's time to try to wiggle it into the truck, which I barely have enough maneuverability with the forklift and getting the engine forward and down deep enough without ramming parts of the forklift into the other parts of the truck. But eventually I am able to get it maneuvered into place. And then I fully set it down into the motor mounts. Now all the engine weights into the truck. I can get the forklift out of the way. Up here is the front motor mount. It has a big rubber damper. 
And then for the rear motor mounts, it's these two snouts that go off the side of the transmission into these little cubbies. And then I just bolt this top cap onto the top of those to, to hold those motor mounts in place. So I'm zapping those on. Right here, I'm installing a bypass oil filter, which I love bypass oil filters. Only some of the oil pressure is diverted over to the bypass oil filter, and it kind of just seeps through a real fine mesh. And this filter will catch contaminants that even the main oil filter won't catch. All right, everything's getting back together with this engine. Now, since it's never seen oil before, I'm about to put oil in it, but instead of just pouring it into the engine, I'm going to tap into this oil plug. This whole rail that runs along the side of the engine there is a galley for oil that oil pressure runs through. So I have this system over here. This is the lid off the waste oil barrel that feeds the turbos of the burn barrel. So the premise behind this is that this is an old oil pump off of one of my old diesel engines. I'll spin it with this drill and it's going to pick up oil from this nice clean bucket full of oil run it through here through this filter head got a brand new oil filter there that i'm about to put on and then from there it'll pump out and go through this tube and just going to thread into that hole this way oil gets pumped through all the parts of the engine all the bearings get lubricated and before this engine even spins over at all it has all the oil where it needs to be Okay, I think I have this fuel system primed as good as I can get it. So let's start cranking on this engine and see if it'll fire up.
Uh, it's great to be back in this truck. Felt like I was never going to drive this scene again. So I'm so glad it's back on the road. It seemed like it was just in a million pieces for a while there. celebration next step is to hook this thing to a trailer and start towing with it i'm super excited to put this thing to work i have some plans to haul some cool things with this truck and obviously i'll keep you guys involved in all the adventures of this truck so subscribe stay tuned